A second chance a widower takes his daughter on a cruise oh please, daddy. Can we go? It would be so much fun. Besides, it would do you good to get out. You never leave the house. I was listening to Bobby, short for Roberta, my 13-year-old daughter begged me to take her on a cruise. You know the one, with all cartoon characters as the theme. I thought about what she said about me never leaving the house. I guess it was true. Ever since my wife had passed away I had pretty much shut myself in. Bobby's mother had been the love of my life and her death had nearly destroyed me. If it hadn't been for our daughter, God knows where I would be. She was the reason I had continued on. Two years after my wife's death I was still in mourning. Whenever Bobby was around I would put on a brave face and pretend everything was okay but some nights I would still cry into my pillow. I owned my own company. We designed customized computer programs for large businesses. Even though I'd had to let a couple programmers go due to the downturn in the economy, we were still able to stay afloat. It wasn't like I needed the money if we did fail. I had made a lot when things were booming and had wisely invested it. As for getting out of the house, I would go into the office a couple times a week. The rest of the time I worked from home. With the internet and webcams, I could always talk to anyone that needed me from my home office. Other than that the only times I went out was to attend Bobby's school functions and her soccer games. I made sure I was always there for her. For the first year after her mother's death we were both pretty much a mess but during the last year she had seemed to come to terms with it and was coping quite well. It was me that was still a mess emotionally. I realized that I hadn't taken Bobby anywhere other than maybe the mall when she needed clothes since my wife died. Bobby was going to be out for summer vacation in a couple weeks and I decided she was right. It might be fun to go on a cruise together. Okay, sweetie, let me see what I can do. I'll go online and make reservations. Bobby squealed with glee and wrapped her arms around my neck and squeezed hard. Thank you, daddy. I love you so much. Yeah, it's funny how you always love me when you want something, I said, teasing her. Uh uh, I always love you daddy. I know, baby, and I love you too. But, tomorrow's a school day and you need to get your little behind in bed. Yes, daddy. Bobby skipped off happily to her room to get ready for bed. She was the sweetest child, never giving me any problems. I thanked God every day that she had been born. She was a part of her mother. I gave her time to get in bed and then went in to tuck her in and tell her good night. After I turned her light out I returned to my office and kept my word to her. I booked this passage on a seven-day cruise in a two-bedroom suite. It wasn't cheap but I could afford it and wanted the best for Bobby. When I told her at breakfast that our trip was in four weeks, she was ecstatic. I swear she was walking on air when I dropped her off at school. Needless to say, the cruise wasn't the only expense. Oh no, Bobby dragged me to the mall as she said we needed new clothes for our trip. I let her pick out enough new outfits for the week and even allowed her to choose some new clothes for me. She may only be 13 but I must admit she does have good taste. Wanting to make sure there were no last minute surprises we flew to Florida on Friday and spent the night in a hotel prior to our boarding the ship on Saturday. Right on time we went aboard the next day. Our first priority was to get settled into our room. Bobby was so excited that she had her own room and that we had a balcony looking out over the water, I thought she was going to burst. It wasn't long before she was dragging me out of the room to go explore. She ooed and awed at all the things she saw that were directed towards entertaining kids. We ate dinner in one of the family dining rooms that evening and then attended the welcome aboard gathering where they explained about all the things there was to do. There were a lot of planned activities for kids depending on their age. Bobby and I talked it over and she wanted to participate in one of the supervised activities for kids her age the next morning and then for me to take her swimming in the afternoon. My daughter was up bright and early the next morning literally dragging me out of bed to get going. I took her for breakfast and then walked her to where the kids club met. Having the rest of the morning to myself I decided to be adventurous. I went back to our suite and sat out on the balcony and read one of the books I had brought with me. At lunchtime I went and collected Bobby for lunch. She wanted to go to an onboard pizzeria. I'm not the biggest fan of pizza but this trip was for her so I agreed. We took another stroll around the ship just checking things out. Around 2 Bobby's pulled me back to the room to change into our swimsuits. There were three pools on board and we went to the one that was for families. The other two were for either adults only or kids only. 
I took my book with me and found a couple loungers. Bobby took off for the water while I read. I glanced up often to make sure she was okay and wasn't surprised to see her playing with a cute little girl around five years old. Bobby loved little kids and was very good with them. I took note of the slim brunette sitting on the edge of the pool with her legs in the water. She was obviously the little girl's mother. Bobby and Amy Bobby had a lot of fun during her morning activities but she was determined to get her dad out of their rooms. She loved her father very much and she worried about him shutting himself off from life. She knew her father had loved her mother so much that he still hurt. She wished he would meet someone his age to be friends with, if not more. At least bringing him to the pool got him out around other people. Once her dad had settled in his lounge Bobby hopped into the pool. She had only just got in when she saw a pretty lady with a little girl walk to the water. The mom got in and reached out and picked her daughter up and set her down in the shallow end. Bobby waded over to them. Hi, I'm Bobby, she said to the little girl. Hello, my name's Carrie, the little girl said smiling. And that's my mommy. Bobby introduced herself to the little girl's mother and then started to play with the five-year-old. Amy Wilson smiled as she watched her daughter, Carrie, having fun and enjoying the attention of the older girl. She hopped onto the edge of the pool and sat with her legs in the water. She did notice the guy in the lounge looking their way a few times. Having just been divorced six months earlier, men weren't high on her list. Sure, he's fit and good looking but she bet he was a pig just like her ex-husband. Are you out here alone? Amy asked Bobby. No, I'm here with my dad. That's him over there, she said, waving to him. Oh. Amy, said, realizing that was why he kept glancing their way. Is your mom here, too? A look of sadness crossed Bobby's face. I don't have a mom anymore. She died. Oh honey, I'm so sorry, Amy said. But I do have daddy. He's the best dad in the whole wide world, Bobby said, brightening up. Would you like to meet him? That's okay, Bobby. He looks like he's comfortable with his book, she said, not really interested in meeting men. He would spend all his time reading if I let him. Wait, let me get him. Before Amy could think up an excuse for her not to, Bobby had climbed out of the pool and was pulling at her father's hand urging him to get up. David come on, dad. Don't just sit here like a bump on a log all day. Get in the pool with me, my daughter said, pulling at my hand. I chuckled and let her pull me to my feet and hopped into the pool with her. As soon as we were in she pulled on my hand again leading me over to where her little playmate was. Daddy, this is Carrie. Isn't she cute? Bobby said as we reached the shallow end of the pool. Hello, Carrie, I said, smiling down at the youngster. And this is Carrie's mom, Ms. Wilson, Bobby said. Hello, Ms. Wilson, I said politely. Hello, Mr. She answered, obviously not knowing my last name. David Johnson, just call me David. Up close I noticed that Ms. Wilson was very attractive. She was wearing a rather conservative one-piece swimsuit but I could tell from her slim waist and well-toned legs she obviously kept herself fit. I made a couple comments about the cruise and the weather and she just nodded, not hardly looking at me. Obviously she wasn't inclined to have a conversation with me which was fine. It wasn't like I was trying to pick her up or anything. Not wanting to intrude into her personal space I excused myself and returned to my book. If her husband showed up, he might get the wrong idea and I wasn't looking for trouble. Amy Amy watched as Bobby pulled her father to the pool and over to where she was watching her daughter play in the water. She was a little irritated at the intrusion. When Bobby had introduced David to her she purposely didn't give him her first name, letting Ms. Wilson suffice. And the couple times he had made comments she kept her responses to a curt nod. What she couldn't help notice was that he was really handsome up close and obviously worked out. His chest and abs were well defined. His dark hair with just a touch of grey at the temples complemented his deep blue eyes. After a few minutes he had returned to his chair. Amy thought he was at least perceptive enough to know he wasn't going to get lucky with her. I worry about him. He never goes anywhere since mama died. I don't think he would ever leave the house if I didn't make him, Bobby said after her dad had left. How long ago has it been? Amy asked. Two years. Amy was shocked that it had been that long. She looked over at David and thought he must have really loved his wife if he wasn't out looking for women after two years. She then felt guilty by how she had treated him. Amy stayed at the pool for a while, 
letting Carrie enjoy playing with Bobby. A couple times she glanced over at David and wondered what it would have been like to marry a man who cared so much for his wife instead of the two timing pigs she had married. Isn't Carrie's dad going to come out to the play with her? Bobby asked Amy. No, her dad and I don't live together anymore. He moved away and she doesn't get to see him. Oh, Bobby said. Amy decided that Carrie had enough sun for one day and told Bobby they were going to go in now. Bobby picked Carrie up and handed her to Amy. Bye, Carrie. I had fun playing with you, Bobby said. Me too. I like you, Carrie said. It was very nice to meet you, Ms. Wilson. Thank you for letting me play with Carrie. I hope we see you again. It was very nice to meet you, too, Bobby. I'm sure Carrie would love to play with you again if we see you around. David the first glanced up to see Ms. Wilson and her daughter leaving the pool area as Bobby swam back over and got out of the water. Daddy, I'm hungry, my daughter said. Guess we can't have that. Come on, let's go shower and change and I'll get you something to eat. We changed and had an early dinner. As we ate, Bobby told me how much she had enjoyed playing with little Carrie. She also said she was sad for her because she didn't have a daddy. I asked her what she meant by that and Bobby told me that Carrie's dad had moved away and didn't see her anymore. I looked at my daughter and shook my head. How could a man not want to see his own child? When we were eating, Bobby said that there was a movie she wanted to see. The ship had areas set aside for kids of certain age groups with games and movies. She wanted to go to the one that was for kids 10 to 14. Parents weren't allowed in, but they were watched over by some of the ship staff. I dropped her off to have fun with the other kids and told her I would come back at 9 to get her. I went back to the room and read until it was time to meet her. She was ready for bed when we got back. She's had a full day and was tired. The next day the ship made its first stop at one of the islands. It had beautiful white sand beaches and a skiff that went back and forth about every half hour taking people to and from the island. Bobby wanted to go to the beach, so we caught the little boat and headed over. There were umbrellas and loungers along the beach so I was able to sit in comfort and watch my daughter frolic along the shoreline. We had been there a half hour when I heard the voice of a little girl shouting excitedly. Bobby, Bobby. Little Carrie rushed by my chair towards the water and my daughter. She ran over laughing merrily and hugged my daughter. Hurrying behind her was Ms. Wilson. She went to the girls and I heard her and my daughter talking. Bobby promised she would look after Carrie and wouldn't let her get into the deep water. As the beach sloped gently out they could safely play in the shallows. Bobby then suggested that Ms. Wilson could sit with me. I saw Carrie's mom look to where Bobby was pointing at me and she paused as if she was considering it. Hesitantly she walked over. Hello, David. Would you mind if I share your umbrella while the girls play? Not at all, Ms. Wilson. Please have a seat. Please call me Amy. David, I apologize about the way I acted yesterday. That's all right, Amy. You didn't do anything wrong. You don't need to apologize. Amy gave me a small smile and took a seat in the lounge on the other side of the small table with the umbrella. We sat in silence watching our daughters laugh and carry on. I saw Bobby whisper in Carrie's ear and the little girl grin and nod her head. The two girls came charging across the sand towards us. Bobby grabbed my hand pulling at me as Carrie pulled on her mother's. Come on, Dad. We want you guys to help us build a sand castle. I laughed as I let her pull me up. The last time I had built sand castles with my daughter was when she was only a little older than Carrie. My wife was still alive and we had taken a vacation to the beach. We hurried down to the water's edge and soon had a good start on a castle. Occasionally I would look up and see Amy smile at me as we worked with our daughters. It seemed all too soon that we were needing to pack up and head back to the ship. Amy and Carrie went back with us to catch the skiff. Bobby and Carrie walked between Amy and I holding hands and chattering away. It did my heart good to see my daughter having fun. When we were back on board, our daughters started begging us to let them have dinner together that evening. They were so cute that Amy and I couldn't help but laugh and give in. We had enough time to shower and I got in a short nap before we went to meet Amy and Carrie. We ended up in the pizzeria again but only on the promise from Bobby that she and I would eat in one of the other restaurants the next night. The pizza was served buffet style. We filled out plates and our daughters hurried to one of the booths and slid in one side to sit side by side. Amy turned and looked at me. 
I smiled and shrugged my shoulders. She slid in and I sat down next to her. We didn't really get into our personal lives but I learned from Amy that she had won this trip in a contest of some kind. After we had eaten we took the girls to one of the arcades and watched them play games. Bobby was very attentive to the little girl and helped her with the games. When we got ready to return to our rooms, it was Carrie who whispered into Bobby's ear. Bobby grinned and nodded at her. All the way back to the room, my daughter chattered about how much fun she's been having. Amy Amy had agreed to take her daughter to the beach but as they walked towards the water, her daughter had pulled her hand free and took off running. At first she had been afraid Carrie was going to run out into the sea but when Amy saw Bobby she breathed a sigh of relief. Amy went to the girls and Bobby said she would look after Carrie and she could sit with her dad. Still embarrassed at how she had acted yesterday she cautiously approached him and asked to share his umbrella. She was grateful that David was so gracious in telling her he had not taken offense to her demeanor the day before at the pool. Amy had watched how David interacted with Bobby while they built sand castles and could tell he loved his daughter very much. Once again she wished she had married a man who was more like David and not the one who had turned his back on his wife and daughter. As she and Carrie headed back to their room that evening she listened to her daughter carry on about how much fun she was having. She smiled and was really glad to see Carrie so happy. That night as she lay in bed she thought about David. He wasn't like most men she had met. He didn't leer at her, he was soft-spoken and a total gentleman. David we got up on our third day aboard ship and went to breakfast. This would be another day at sea. Bobby wanted to go back to the kids room and then meet me for lunch. I was fine with that as it would give me time to sit out on the balcony and read. I picked her up at noon and we actually ate something other than pizza, thank god. I can only stomach just so much pepperoni. In the afternoon she wanted to go to the pool again. I found a lounger and started to read. Instead of jumping in the water, Bobby sat next to me seeming a bit antsy. Suddenly she bolted up and ran across the deck. I looked up to see Amy and Carrie coming towards us. The two girls talked excitedly to Amy and she nodded her head. Bobby took Carrie to the shallow end to play in the water while Amy came over and said hello and sat down in the lounge next to mine. We sat quietly and watched the girls. Finally I asked her if she was enjoying the cruise. Yes, it's nice to get away from the grind and relax. Carrie is really having a blast. Your daughter is so sweet to look after her the way she does. Bobby is something special. She really has a way with younger kids and loves to look after them. I think she's going to make a great mother someday, I said with pride. So is there anything you haven't done yet you want to do? Well, part of the package I won included a treatment at the spa but Carrie doesn't want to go to the kids room since parents aren't allowed in, so I guess I won't get to do that. I thought about it for a few minutes and then made a suggestion. We don't make our next stop until after lunch tomorrow. Why don't you make an appointment in the morning and I know Bobby would be happy to watch after Carrie and I can keep an eye on both of them. I couldn't impose on you like that, David. Honestly, Amy, it wouldn't be any imposition. We would be happy to watch Carrie for you. Amy paused as if she was wondering if she could trust me with her daughter. I guess she decided I was okay. It would be nice to be pampered. If you're sure I'll ask Carrie if she would like to spend some time with Bobby. Amy and Carrie joined Bobby and I for dinner again that evening. I had already asked Bobby if she would like to spend the morning watching over Carrie and she was all for it. When Amy asked Carrie about it over dinner she was thrilled with the idea. The next morning we met them near the arcade where we told Amy we would be when she got out of the spa. The girls had a blast playing games. Even I got into the action with them. There was one game in particular that Carrie wanted to play but she was a little too short. She asked me if she could sit in my lap so she could reach it. We were in the middle of that when Amy returned from the spa looking very relaxed. I am surprised, David. Carrie doesn't usually like to sit on a man's lap. He's not a man, mommy. He's Bobby's daddy, she said innocently. Amy and I laughed at that. We all had a quick bite to eat and then caught the skiff to our next port of call. This stop was more touristy with lots of shops to visit. We wandered around the village and I bought the kids some souvenirs. When we got back to the ship that evening we were all tired from all the walking we did. We decided that we were just going to stay that night and order room service. We agreed to meet up at the pool the next afternoon. I fell asleep that night thinking about how I had enjoyed being in Amy's company. 
I hadn't spent this much time around a woman since my wife had passed away. Amy when Amy got back to their room she ordered a quick dinner for Carrie who was tuckered out then put her to bed. As she lay in her own bed she thought over the day. She had been amazed to see her daughter sitting in David's lap when she had returned to the arcade. Ever since her husband had walked out on them, Carrie had seemed to have a distrust of men just like her mother. And she was taken with how David always made sure to buy something for Carrie when he bought something for Amy. And most of all he had never hit on her. Amy wasn't vain but she did know that men did find her to be very attractive and she wasn't used to being around one who didn't make a pass at her. She was actually finding him to be intriguing. David the first found myself looking forward to seeing Amy and Carrie that afternoon. I was starting to think that my daughter was right. I really did need to get out and start living again. Bobby and I arrived at the pool first and I found two empty loungers. I put my towel and novel in one to save it for Amy. I spotted them when they came on deck and watched as she walked towards me. She smiled brightly at me when she came up. Today we chatted with ease. We still didn't discuss our private lives other than what concerned our daughters. I did tell her a lot about Bobby, her school and her hobbies. When we decided that the girls had had enough water and sun it was Amy who suggested we meet up for dinner. I quickly agreed. We ate early and then took the girls to the arcade again. The next day we would be headed back towards our starting point. We had one final night aboard the ship. We spent the day together. We even got a few comments about what a lovely family we were from fellow passengers. Amy and I just smiled and went on our way, not bothering to correct them. It was that afternoon when we talked about where we would eat tonight that Bobby surprised me with her suggestion. Dad, you and Ms. Wilson haven't got to eat in the real fancy restaurant yet. Why don't you guys let me babysit Carrie in our room tonight and both of you go there? They even have a place you can dance after you eat. I don't know, sweetie. I mean Amy might not feel comfortable leaving Carrie with you. Geez, dad. She's sitting right there. Ask her. I could feel my face getting red. Amy, would you like to eat in the adult restaurant tonight? That might be nice, David. If Bobby doesn't mind watching Carrie. And so it was set. I had my first date in 15 years. Actually I just looked at it as a dinner with a friend. After all, it wasn't like we would see each other again once the cruise was over. Since it was going to take any longer to get ready, I took our daughters to eat. Yep, you guessed it, pizza. I then took both girls back to our suite and Bobby played with Carrie while I got ready. At 7.30 I went to Amy's room. I knew she was beautiful, but she was a true knockout in her little black dress. We need to go back to my room before we go to dinner. I said. Why, David? Because I need to get my bat. Your bat? She asked, confused. Yeah, to beat off all the guys trying to steal my date. Amy giggled. I'll take that as a compliment. I was the envy of every man when we walked into the restaurant. We were seated at a nice cozy table for two. I had a nice bottle of wine brought to the table when we ordered out meal. For the first time since we had met we opened up about our lives. Amy told me how she had fallen for her ex-husband and against her parents' wishes had married him only to have him leave her and their daughter for another woman. I told Amy about losing my wife and how hard it had been. I was touched to see the tears well up in her eyes. After that we changed the subject to less emotional topics. The food was excellent and when our plates had been cleared away I asked her if she would care to go to the lounge next door. Amy said she would like that and soon we were sitting at another table listening to the music and watching couples dance. The final night of the cruise they were playing all slow songs. Amy, I'm not the best dancer in the world but I would be honored if you would dance with me. I would love to, David. I led Amy onto the dance floor and took her in my arms. She was the first woman I had held in two years and when her body pressed up against mine a jolt of electricity went through my body. We stayed on the floor for three songs. Her body seemed to melt to mine. I was in a daze when I led her back to our table. We danced one more time for another three songs and decided we should get back to check on the girls. We took the elevator to deck nine and walked to my rooms. Amy was amazed at the size of our quarters. Both our daughters were asleep on the floor in front of the TV. I chuckled at the sight and told Amy to wait. I picked up Bobby and carried her to bed. She only slightly roused and went back to sleep as I tucked her in. I kissed the top of her head and went back out to the living room area. 
I bent down and picked up Carrie in my arms and told Amy I would carry her back to their room. We made it there without her waking up and I gently laid her in her bed and pulled the covers over her. Amy leaned down and kissed her daughter's cheek and then walked me to the door. Thank you for a wonderful evening, David. It was truly my pleasure. It's been a long time since I've enjoyed an evening like this. How about we meet for breakfast in the morning? I know Bonnie would never forgive me if she didn't have the chance to say goodbye to Carrie. Yes, David, that would be nice. She quickly kissed me on the cheek and went back inside her room. I returned to my sweet feeling conflicted. For the first time since my wife had died I had a desire for another woman. I went to bed torn by what I felt. I cried that night, afraid I was betraying my love for my departed wife. Amy Amy went to bed that night with feelings she thought she would never have again. It had been a wonderful night. David had a wonderful date. He had complimented her on her looks and had listened attentively to everything she had to say. And when he took her onto the dance floor and he had put his arms around her she felt a jolt flash through her. Amy cried into her pillow that night that she hadn't met a man like David to fall in love with. David we met for breakfast on our last morning. Our daughters gabbed away about how much fun they'd had. Amy and I sat and listened. We would look at each other and smile. We would be arriving in port soon, so after breakfast we had to return to our rooms to pack and have our luggage ready to be taken off the ship. We told the girls to say goodbye to each other. Amy looked at me and stepped in and hugged me. I held her tightly for a minute before releasing her. I could see a glimmering of tears in her eyes as she looked at me. Thank you for last night, David. I had a wonderful evening. I did too, Amy. Here, this is my card. It has my email address on it. Just in case, well, you know. I said. I wasn't sure why I gave it to her. Maybe somewhere inside I didn't want to have her leave my life. Amy nodded and smiled as she took it. Then Carrie ran up to me and held her arms out. I bent down and picked her up. She wrapped her little arms around my neck and hugged me and kissed my cheek. I wish I had a daddy like you, she said out of the blue. I was taken aback. I was going to miss both Amy and Carrie more than I had realized. I was too choked up to speak so I just hugged her tight. Amy hugged Bobby and we went our separate ways. I looked back one last time just as Amy turned to look at us. She gave me a sad smile and I saw a single tear slide down her cheek. Our bags had been picked up and once we docked we made our way off. I looked around but I didn't see Amy or Carrie anywhere. We had an afternoon flight booked back to take us back home. I hadn't realized it but I had hardly said a word to my daughter since breakfast. Once we were in our seats on the plane she looked up at me. You really like her, don't you dad? I looked at her startled. Yes, Bobby. I guess I do. She's a very nice lady. I can tell she likes you too. Maybe you should give her a call sometime. Yeah, maybe. I then realized I didn't have any way to contact her. I had given her my card but hadn't asked for her number or email. I tried to perk up and spent the rest of the flight talking with Bobby about our trip. For her the trip had been thrilling. I felt good that I had agreed to take her. When we got back to our home airport we headed for the baggage claim area. I had just picked up our last bag when I stepped backwards onto someone's foot. I heard a woman's voice cry out in pain. I quickly turned. I'm so sorry, I said immediately, apologizing. The woman on whose toes I had stepped on looked up at me. David. She exclaimed in surprise. Amy, what are you doing here? I said, equally surprised. This is where we live, Amy said. I realized that while we had talked about a lot of things, we hadn't ever mentioned where we lived. I looked at Bobby and saw her laughing at us as she stood holding Carrie in her arms. What? I said to her, I can't believe you two didn't know we live in the same city. Carrie and I have already talked about it on the boat and made plans to see each other again, Bobby giggled. I had a luggage cart and helped Amy get her bags and loaded them with ours. She and Carrie had taken different airlines but as coincidence would have it, we had arrived at the same time. Is your car here? I asked Amy as we were leaving the baggage claim. No, we're going to take a cab home. Where do you live, exactly? Over in Richmond Hills. We go right by their daddy. Let's give them a ride home, piped in my daughter. If you would give me a chance, I was going to suggest that, I said. How about it, Amy? Can we give you and Carrie a ride? If it's not really out of your way, that would be nice. 
I was thinking that even if it was out of our way, I would still want to give her a ride home. All right, if you will wait here with the girls, I'll get the car and pick you up. As I went to the parking lot I couldn't help but wonder if it wasn't fate that we had met. Whatever the reason, I now believe that this wouldn't be the last time that Amy and I saw each other. When I returned we quickly loaded the car. Our daughters sat in the back talking and giggling. All the way to Amy's. I helped Amy get their luggage into their condo and got a nice hug for my effort. She slipped a piece of paper into my hand and asked me to call her. Bobby talked all the way home about how great it was that we all lived so close together. I just nodded my head as we drove. I went to bed that night still conflicted over my feelings for Amy and my love for my departed wife. Our first day back I headed into the office to make sure everything had run smoothly while we were gone. It was great to find out that there had been no problems. I had good people working for me. To thank them for their hard work every year I would have an annual picnic for my employees and their families. I would arrange to have a catered barbecue cooked on site. This year it was scheduled for the weekend after our cruise. Bobby started in almost immediately how nice it would be if I invited Amy and Carrie to go with us. It didn't really take any convincing for me to agree. On Thursday I called Amy. Hello Amy, I said when she answered the phone. Hello David, I was hoping you would call. That's nice to hear. The reason I am calling is that my company has an annual picnic every year for the employees and their families and it is this Saturday. I was wondering if you and Carrie would like to go. Sure, David, I would like that. I know how much Carrie wants to see Bobby. She asks me every day when they will get to see each other. Great, I'll pick you up at 11. The picnic actually begins at noon but I like to get there a little early to make sure the caterers are set up. We chatted for a few more minutes and I hung up feeling good. I really did want to see her again. Amy Amy had been wondering if David was going to call her. She had even been tempted to call him but kept putting it off. Now he had called and invited her and Carrie to a picnic. It wasn't like being asked out on a romantic date for two but she would get to spend more time with him. She also knew that Carrie was going to be thrilled to see Bobby again. David Bobby was so excited that Amy and Carrie were going to the picnic. On Saturday morning, starting about 9, she would ask every 15 minutes if it was time to leave. I had to laugh at her eagerness. When I did finally tell her it was time she raced to the car and was already buckled in by the time I got there. We pulled up in front of Amy's condo and just as we stepped out of the car her front door opened and little Carrie burst out running as fast as her little legs would carry her and leapt up into Bonnie's arms. I looked over and saw Amy standing in the door laughing. When my daughter put her little friend on the ground Carrie bounded over to me and held her arms up. I reached down and picked her up and gave her a hug which was enthusiastically returned. I swore I saw Amy dab at a tear as she watched us. Amy closed and locked her door and came over and gave Bobby a hug as I put Carrie in the back seat and buckled her in. My daughter ran around the car and got in beside Carrie and I opened the front door for Amy. Instead of getting in she stepped up and hugged me. I felt the same jolt of electricity surge through me that I had felt the night I first held her as we danced. I put my arms around her and returned the hug. The drive to the park was fairly short. Amy and I mainly listened to our daughters happily chattering away in the back. When we arrived and got out Carrie excitedly pointed at the swings in the little playground area and Bobby asked for permission to take her little friend over there. Amy said it would be fine. They were close enough we could keep our eyes on them. I saw where the caterers were setting up and told Amy I wanted to make sure everything was in order. As we walked towards them Amy slipped her hand into mine and I felt a tingle of pleasure at this simple contact. My employees and their families began arriving at noon and I made sure I was there to greet them. I introduced Amy to each arrival and was pleased to see they made sure to make her feel welcome. I did catch a few of them giving me nice smiles. They all knew that since my wife's passing that I hadn't dated. The picnic went great. The weather was perfect and the food was served on time and was enjoyed by all. We had some organized games like the three-legged race and an egg toss. Amy stayed close to my side all afternoon and even helped me hand out the prizes for winners of the games. The picnic officially ended at 5 and by 5.30 I had said goodbye to the last family to leave. The caterers were finished packing up and I loaded Amy and the kids up in the car. Thank you for inviting us, David. We both had a really nice time, Amy said once we were in the car. I should be thanking you for coming.
I enjoyed spending more time with you, I replied. We talked about how well the picnic had gone as I drove them home. I pulled up and got out to help carry out of the car but Bobby beat me to it. We exchanged hugs all around and Amy and I hugged last. She looked up into my eyes. Maybe we can get together again, I said hopefully. Amy nodded. I would like that. Call me, she said. And then added, soon. She stood on her tiptoes and placed a gentle kiss on my lips. Again I felt the electricity. Amy Amy put her tired but happy daughter to bed that evening before turning in herself. She lay in bed thinking about the events of the day. She really had enjoyed spending time with David. She had thought that David worked for the company and was surprised to learn he owned it. And she recalled how welcome his employees made her feel. She could tell they all had a great respect for their boss and were quite fond of him. This just convinced her more that David was a special man. She fell asleep hoping he would call her soon. David Bobby waited all the way until Wednesday before she started bugging me about when I was going to call Amy again. She thought it would be a good idea if she babysat Carrie so that Amy and I could go out together. One trait my daughter had inherited from her mother was her ability to read me like a book. Daddy, I know how much you loved mom. We both still do. She loved us both so much. Please daddy, you have to know that she would never want you to live alone and be unhappy because she can't be here with us. Neither of us will ever forget mom, but I know you really like Amy and it's time for you to be happy again. I couldn't help the tears that ran down my cheeks as I looked at my wonderful daughter. I realized she was right. My wife would never have wanted me to pine my life away any more than I would have wished that for her. As long as I had Bobby I would always have a piece of her. Just when did you get so smart? I asked her. Bobby just rolled her eyes at me and giggled. I've always been smart. I get it from my parents. It's about time you noticed. I reached over and grabbed her and started tickling her as she squealed with glee and squirmed begging me to stop. I relented and hugged her tight as she wrapped her arms around my neck and gave me a kiss on the cheek. I called Amy that night and asked her if she would like to have dinner with me Saturday night. Just the two of us. I told her that Bobby had offered to babysit Carrie here at my house. I also told her that I would arrange to have our neighbor's 18-year-old daughter stay with the kids. She often came over to stay with Bobby when I had to go somewhere. Amy sounded excited and instantly accepted my offer. We decided it would be easier if she drove over here since Carrie would be staying with Bobby. I told her we lived in a gated community and I would leave her name with security and they would let her in. When I told my daughter that I had a date for Saturday night I think she was as excited as I was. I was impatient the rest of the week waiting for Saturday and when the day arrived I realized that I was beginning to feel nervous. I felt like a high school kid going out on his first date. Luckily I had the help of my daughter who laid out the clothes I should wear. I got her seal of approval once I was dressed. The doorbell rang right at 6 and I realized that my palms were sweating as I reached for the doorknob. When I opened the door and saw Amy looking absolutely gorgeous my nervousness changed to desire. Little Carrie greeted me with open arms demanding a hug which I was more than happy to give her. I passed her to Bobby and they ran off laughing as my daughter took her in hand. I was now free to turn my undivided attention to Amy. She seemed to glide across the floor as she stepped into my arms. My heart was beating hard as I leaned down and kissed her softly. Her lips were soft and warm and I believed they spoke to me telling me that she was glad to be there. I gave Amy a tour of the house and she seemed to be impressed. The neighbor's daughter, Jill, showed up shortly after Amy and I introduced them. I made sure Jill still had my mobile number and we gave our daughters a hug and headed out. I had made reservations at a restaurant that was on the top floor of the tallest building in town. It had windows that looked out over the city and gave a nice panoramic view. I made sure to reserve a table in one corner. This would be a little more private and had the best view. Amy had never been there before and was very impressed. Our conversation flowed freely and I couldn't help but feel that she was enjoying herself as much as I was. She had a lot of questions about how I had come to own my own business. I told her about how a friend of my parents had complained that he couldn't find a program that met his needs. I offered to try and write one for him. I worked with the owner and two months later had him a program that worked for him. He told other business owners about what I had done and they contacted me to help them. By word of mouth I was soon swamped with new business and had to hire a couple other programmers to help out. My company was born and it became a success.
After I had paid the bill I took her down one floor to a nightclub that had a quartet that played dance music. This wasn't a loud hangout full of blaring music but rather a dimly lit place where you could talk without having to shout. I ordered each other a glass of wine and then asked her to dance. The music was romantic, meant for slow dancing too. Amy seemed to melt into my arms and she felt so right being there. During our second dance I looked down at the top of her head and she raised her face to mine. We stared part slightly. My tongue naturally slipped into her mouth and was warmly greeted by hers. I think we were both slightly breathless when we broke the kiss. We danced several more times and then I noted that we needed to leave so Jill could go home. Amy held tight to my arm all the way to the car and sat close to me holding my hand as we drove home. I was sorry our evening was coming to an end. We got to my home and I paid Jill and thanked her for babysitting. She told us that our daughters had gone to bed around 10. Amy and I walked down the hall and looked into my daughter's room and saw that Carrie was in bed with Bobby and they were both soundly asleep. I took Amy's arm and drew her back into the living room. Amy it's late and Carrie is already asleep. It would be a shame to have to wake her up. Why don't you stay the night, I said. Her eyes grew wide and she looked a little shocked. I'm sorry. I should have said that I have two spare bedrooms and you're more than welcome to use one, I said in a hurry hoping that I hadn't offended her. Amy smiled at me. Well, I guess that would be okay. Only I didn't bring anything to sleep in. Have you got a spare shirt I could wear? I chuckled. Hang on just a second. I popped into my bedroom and got one button up and one t-shirt and brought them back out. Your choice, I said, holding them up. Amy looked them over and then took the t-shirt and held it in front of her. It would come down to just above her knees. This ought to work just fine. I led her down the hall to the spare bedroom. I showed her that this and the other bedroom had a bathroom between them and as no one was in the other room it would be hers to use alone. She rewarded me with a toe curling kiss. I hurriedly left her to change before I forgot I was a gentleman. I fell asleep that night feeling happier than I had in a long time. Amy, my god that man can kiss, Amy thought as David left her to get changed for bed in his spare room. She felt a naughty shiver run through her body as she recalled feeling how hard he was as they danced and how her body naturally pushed against him. As she slipped her panties off she could see the evidence that he had made her feel a deep desire for him. At first she had been a little shocked when he suggested that she stay the night until he quickly said he had a spare room. Then she couldn't help but feel a little disappointed that he hadn't actually just taken her to his room. Amy knew that they had both had a rough time. He had lost his wife and she had found out the man she had married was a cheating scumbag. They should take their time but she hoped soon they could move forward and their relationship would become all she now hoped it could be, David. I woke up and the birds were singing outside my window. For the first time in a long time I was in a hurry to get out of bed. I went into my bathroom and relieved myself and brushed my teeth before heading to the kitchen and putting on the coffee to brew. Next I opened the refrigerator and pulled out the makings for breakfast. I was standing at the stove and had just put the bacon on to fry when I felt a pair of arms wrap around my waist. A woman's body pressed into my back as I was hugged. I turned around and put my arms around Amy and gave her a good morning kiss. When she stepped back she asked what I was cooking and I told her eggs, bacon and toast. She jumped in and started cooking the eggs while I tended to the bacon. Despite the fact that it had been over two years since a woman had cooked in my kitchen it felt natural to have her here. And damn but she looked so cute in my t-shirt. My thoughts were interrupted by our daughters bursting into the room. Carrie came racing over to her mother. I spent the night with Bobby, she said proudly as she hugged her mother's leg. She then noted what Amy was wearing. Did you spend the night, too? Amy laughed at her daughter's natural inquisitiveness. Yes honey. David let me sleep in his spare bedroom last night. Bobby seemed to be totally unfazed to see Amy standing in the kitchen wearing my t-shirt. She just gave me a big grin and set about pouring orange juices for her and Carrie. The conversation was light and cheery as we ate. I couldn't again think how long it had been since there was such a feeling of happiness at the table. I had one twinge of guilt but quickly buried it away. Amy helped me to clean the kitchen and then she got dressed and told Carrie it was time to go home. Carrie wasn't happy that they were leaving but she felt a lot better when I invited her and her mother to come back and swim in our pool the next weekend. Over the next week I would call Amy every evening to talk. 
I waited until I knew she would have put Carrie to bed and she always answered on the first ring. I sensed that she enjoyed our chats as much as I did. On Friday evening she told me how much she and Carrie were looking forward to spending the day at my house on Saturday. I made sure she knew I felt the same way and told her that she was welcome as early as they could be here. I didn't have to wait long at 9 a.m. The next morning I answered the doorbell to find Amy and Carrie on my doorstep. I got my now usual greeting hug and kiss on the cheek from Carrie and a tighter hug and kiss on the lips from her mother. Carrie showed up in her bathing suit while Amy wore a sundress and carried a beach bag which I presumed held her bathing suit. Carrie wanted to get straight into the pool. We had to convince her to wait until after lunch when it was a little warmer outside. In the meantime Bobby took her to her bedroom to play. Amy and I sat in the kitchen and talked over a cup of coffee. Amy helped me fix a light lunch and then at the continuing insistence that we go, Schwimmen as Carrie pronounced it the rest of us went to put on our suits. The kids and I were first out and I went ahead with them to the pool. Bobby hopped into the shallow end and helped Carrie into the water. Amy came out the door a few minutes later wearing a cover-up and carrying a towel. She walked over to where I was already laying in a lounge chair and set her towel in the seat next to mine. She raised the cover up, which was like a long loose shirt, up and over her head. I felt my eyes grow wider. She wasn't wearing the one-piece suit she had worn on the cruise but instead had on a bikini. It was a respectable bikini to wear in front of the children but still showed much more skin than her one-piece. I let out a low wolf whistle that only she could hear. Amy grinned and did a pirouette. You like? She asked. I like it. I like it very much, I replied hoping my tongue wasn't hanging out. Amy and I sat basking in the sun until we gave in to the girls' insistence that we get in the water. I let myself be used as a target for their splashes much to the glee of Carrie. After three hours and several applications of sunblock we decided to go in. I especially liked putting the sunblock on Amy's smooth back. We had enough bathrooms that we could all shower and rinse the block and pull chemicals off. Once Bobby was firmly in charge of entertaining Carrie again I poured a glass of wine for Amy and got a beer for myself. With the girls up and about much of the sexual tension between Amy and I was replaced by one of being at ease in each other's company. Time passed quickly and we made dinner side by side. Afterward I was able to ply her with enough wine that she agreed to spend the night again. We had the same sleeping arrangements as before. Carrie and Bobby in Bobby's room, me and mine and Amy in the guest room. Amy and Carrie didn't leave until the following afternoon. During the day we would share small kisses. This became our routine for the next four weeks. Amy and I would talk on the phone each night during the week then we would spend the weekend together with our daughters. A couple of times we took the kids out to the park or the zoo. Each time though our sleeping arrangements were the same. By our sixth week of dating I was wanting to move our relationship to the next level but wasn't sure how to proceed. It had been many years since I had made an overture like that. I was still wondering how to suggest it to Amy when that Saturday night I was in her room and we were locked in a hot kiss. Amy pulled her head back and looked into my eyes. David, Bobby is your daughter, right? She asked. Of course she is, I replied, confused. Then I assume you understand the mechanics of how she was created she continued. I nodded. Well, I'm not suggesting that we actually create a child but I was thinking it might be nice to practice the mechanics of that procedure with you. I had to laugh. Obviously Amy was getting frustrated with my lack of moving forward and was taking it onto herself to give me a push. Well, that was all I needed. I swept her into my arms and carried her to my bedroom and put her on my bed. I lay next to her and pulled her body into mine as we continued the kiss we had started. I ran my hand up from her waist and cupped her breast through the t-shirt she wore. Amy had always insisted on wearing one of my t-shirts to bed and I was all for it as she looked so damn cute in them. Amy's hand reached down and took hold of me and that simple touch was in itself enough to almost release me. I gasped and let out a groan. Careful sweetheart, I'm on the edge as it is, I warned her. Amy gently pushed me onto my back. It's okay, my love. Relax and enjoy yourself and I'm sure the second time will be easier on you. Amy leaned down. Only one other person in my life had ever imparted so much love in this simple act of sex. I wasn't a virgin when I married Bobby's mother and I had engaged in activities with other women but none was ever as special because they weren't doing it as an act of love in itself. 
Now I felt that same emotion from Amy. As much as I would have enjoyed this for an hour I seriously doubt I lasted a full two minutes before I cried out in warning and erupted. I lay on my back gasping for air as Amy looked up at me and licked her lips. Um, was all she said. She slid her body up along mine and kissed me deeply. I held her in my arms until I had fully recovered and then rolled her over. My turn, I said with a leer. Really David, you don't have to, she said, sounding concerned. Maybe not, but I really really want to, I replied. I learned later that her ex-husband had never done that for her. I didn't want to rush it so I licked and kissed my way down. I stuck my tongue in her belly button causing her to giggle. Moving quickly, I slid to the foot of the bed and kissed her feet and upper ankles. Oh David, she called out. I was glad that my daughter's bedroom was on the other side of the house where she wouldn't hear Amy call out in a mixture of a scream and a guttural growl later on. Even after she had collapsed back on the bed and I had moved up to lay alongside her I would see her tremble every few seconds. Finally her eyes opened and she gazed at me in what I could only describe as adoration. Amy put her arm around my neck and pulled my face forcibly to hers and kissed me. My only regret is that I wish we would have done this weeks ago. My eyes were locked with Amy's as we made love, and I felt that we were mirroring the love that we had come to feel for each other. With our earlier activities having tempered our arousal, we made slow gentle love for the next 15 minutes. Our pace migrated from slow to medium and finally as we reached our peak, we were moving fast to meet each other. Her peak triggered mine and we rode the heights together. The act of sex is so much more fulfilling when it is shared with someone you love. This was very much an act of love. I thought of my departed wife only briefly and felt no guilt. I knew she would be happy that I had a second chance at love. We kissed softly afterward. The sheer pleasure of holding her close to me was intense. I love you, I whispered. And I love you too, David. So much, she whispered back to me. At some point we both slipped into sleep. I don't know if I had slept for one hour or two but when I woke up Amy had her back to me as we lay like two spoons. It was morning when we next woke up. I went and started the shower and Amy quickly joined me. Twenty minutes later we emerged clean and refreshed. We found our clothes lying on the floor and dressed. When we entered the kitchen our daughters were already there. I'm sure Carrie was too young to realize the significance of her mother and I coming in together from the direction of my bedroom but it was not lost on my daughter. As Amy was putting on a pot of coffee, Bobby came and kissed my cheek. It's about time, she whispered in my ear with a giggle. I looked at her and raised my eyebrows which she chose to ignore. My daughter turned and went and gave Amy a good morning kiss on the cheek before returning to sit with Carrie. That happened a month ago and Amy and I have discussed that we should continue to explore our relationship and give ourselves a year to move forward. Amy no longer sleeps in the guest room when she and Carrie stay over and personally I believe that we both know it is a foregone conclusion and in less than a year we will announce to everyone that we are making the ultimate commitment.